in one moment you're working in retail folding clothes helping customers find their sizes and doing inventory counts pretty normal job right but life can change what if i told you that one of these retail workers would go on to build a multi-million dollar fashion brand become the creative director of supreme and have his work displayed in the metropolitan museum of art sounds impossible well that's exactly what Tremaine Emery did. How does a part-time worker become globally recognized from his million dollar brand? The year is 2003 and in a bustling J. Crew store, a young Tremaine Emery is learning the basics of retail. But this wasn't his first job. Before J. Crew, he was loading packages for FedEx, hustling to make ends meet. He even briefly studied filmmaking at LaGuardia Community College before dropping out. Like many young people trying to find their way, Tremaine was piecing together a living while searching for his path. Born in Georgia and raised in Jamaica, Queens, Emery grew up with a unique perspective on style. His father, a CBS News cameraman, and his mother made sure he was exposed to culture from an early age. From watching Pavarotti perform with the Harlem Boys Choir in Central Park to seeing cats on Broadway, young Tremaine was absorbing influences that would later shape his creative vision. But let's go back to that J. Crew store floor. Surrounded by preppy American American classics, cable knit sweaters, Oxford shirts, and khakis. Well, it's not exactly the breeding ground for revolutionary fashion you might imagine, but for Emery, it was a retail boot camp. He learned the fundamentals, how to manage inventory, how to interact with customers, and most importantly, how to understand what makes people buy what they buy. But here's what's interesting. While most people saw it as just folding clothes and working the register, Emery was absorbing everything. He watched watched how different customers interacted with different pieces. He noticed how small changes in display could affect sales. He was learning the psychology of fashion retail, one folded sweater at a time. So at first glance, these were just jobs, but for Emery, they were building blocks for something much bigger. After J. Crew, Emery took a job at a liquor store in Queens, then moved on to Kate Spade and Soho. This was his first taste of a more upscale retail environment. Soho and in the early 2000s was the epicenter of New York fashion retail and Emery was right in the middle of it. During his breaks, he spent time at Union, the legendary store co-owned by James who later found Supreme. This was where he started to see how streetwear and high-end fashion could intersect, but it was his next move that would change everything. The year is 2006 and Tremaine is walking into Marc Jacobs for a stockroom position interview. Now let's set the scene. Marc Jacobs at this time was at his peak of cultural influence. This wasn't just another fashion brand. It was the brand that was bridging the gap between high fashion. Most people would be nervous interviewing for a stockroom position, but just imagine people walking in and finding not just the HR manager, but the company president, Robert Duffy, and Mark Jacob himself sitting directly across from you. This wasn't standard procedure, but it showed something crucial about the company culture. Every position mattered. Every hire was important. That's how seriously they took every every aspect of their operation. Speaking of showcasing as a designer or creator today, one of the biggest hurdles is visualizing your work in real world scenarios. Something Emery mastered over his career, whether it's for a client presentation or your online store, seeing your design on a high quality mock-up can make all the difference. This is where Kittle comes into play. Imagine having access to a large library of high quality mock-ups right at your fingertips. From t-shirts to tech devices, all integrated within one seamless design platform. Kittle eliminates the hassle of searching for the right mockup. Instead, you apply your designs directly within the website or app, streamlining how you showcase your creative vision to potential buyers or collaborators. This means you can focus on what really matters, your product and how it connects with people, just like Emery did. Kittle isn't just a tool, it's a part of your creative journey, helping bring your visions to life with ease and professionalism. If you want to take your brand to the next level, Try Kittle for free using my link in the description. I didn't finish college. At that time, I was assistant manager at the Marc Jacobs store. And the last time I spoke to her before she passed, she was like, do you think there's any way if you went back went back to school that you could get a higher, a bigger position at Marc Jacobs? The Marc Jacobs year was transformative. Starting in the stock room, Emery learned the intricate details of luxury fashion operations. Within a year, he was promoted to the sales floor. But what made Marc Jacobs different was his democratic approach. As Tremaine recalls, no matter where you were, 
from the stock room to the boardroom. You got the same clothing allowance every year. 12 garments and two pairs of shoes. It was about the clothes, sure, but it was also about dignity, about treating everyone in the organization with respect. It was a lesson in company culture that would stick with him even to this day. Probably he would have climbed more positions there, but life had other plans for Jermaine. 2008, after witnessing the tragic death of his friend and barber Raheem, Emery knew he needed a change. When his girlfriend was offered a position to open a new Mark Jacobs store in London, he saw this as his opportunity. London 2010. Emery arrived in a city he barely knows, but sometimes being a stranger in a strange land is exactly what you need to reinvent yourself. And reinvent himself he did. He met A-Side at a Nike party. And that chance encounter would lead to the creation of No Vacancy Inn, a cultural collective that would blur the lines between fashion, music, and nightlife. The London scene was electric. Grime music was penetrating US culture. ASAP Mob was making regular appearances. Frank Ocean had moved to town. As Emery puts it, London was a petri dish where different voices were growing, interacting, and connecting. When I said, Mom, you know, I figured out some things. I'm working with this guy, Frank Ocean, working with this, um, me, ASAP. We're working with ASAP Rocky a bit. I'm working with this guy named Serge Becker, um, consulting for him, for his um, venues in, in London. And I'm working with Stussy, you know, as consulting for them on design and, 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 mar and marketing Coming and up. parties. But this is very early. And I said, I think I've figured, figured something out. Only thing my mom said was, I'm happy you figured out how to make a living doing what you always love. Cause she knows I've always been into music and art. No Vacancy Inn became known for his legendary parties, including one when Kanye showed up for a Yeezus listening session. So now Emery's was just throwing parties. Nah, that would be so simplish. He was building relationships that would shape the future of fashion. He connected with Virgil, started consulting for Stussy, and began developing his own creative voice. Now, if you don't know about Stussy, you need to understand something. This isn't just another streetwear Brand. This is the blueprint, the original. Before Supreme, before Bape, before any of the modern streetwear giants, there was Stussy. And Tremaine was about to become a key player in this modern era. And it started precisely with the party. Stussy hired Tremaine and a seed to DJ an event for a Vans collaboration. But here's where Emery talent for turning opportunities into stepping stones came in. Instead of just playing music and collecting a check, he used this moment to showcase his understanding of culture of how fashion music and lifestyle intersected the party led to consulting work and the consulting work led to something bigger stussy saw in emery something special someone who understood both the heritage of the brand and where street culture was heading towards they created a unique position for him art director at large. Now he was traveling the world, connecting with artists, musicians, and creators. He was helping shape not just how Stussy looked, but what it meant in the modern era. One restructuring at Mark Jacobs led to mass layoffs in 2015. Jermaine took his 30,000 euros, severance pay, and invested it all into no vacancy in. When that money ran out, he raided his pension fund for another 26,000 euros. This wasn't just risk taking, it was betting on himself. Then came the Kanye years. Emery moved to LA in 2016 to work for Ye, but the relationship ended with him getting fired. As Emery puts it, a lot of people say, oh, if you got fired, you got fired. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm proud that I got fired by Kanye. I wear it as a badge of honor. With everything he had learned from folding clothes at J. Crew to working with Kanye was preparing him for his biggest move yet. In August of 2019, after years of working for others, Tremaine Emery was ready to tell his own story. He then launched a brand that we all know as today, Denim Tears. Now this wasn't just another clothing brand, Denim Tears was different. It was about telling stories through fashion, specifically the stories of the African American experience. Denim Tears wasn't born from market research or trend forecasting. It came from a deeper place, from history, from family from pain and from purpose. Remember how Emery's father was a news cameraman who covered stories across CBS News? Those influences were woven into the very fabric of denim tears. The launch was calculated for maximum impact. The first collection dropped on the 400th anniversary of slavery in America. The centerpiece, a pair of Levi jeans decorated with cotton wreaths. They were a history lesson about how the United States was built on slavery and the exploitation 
exploitation of black labor in the cotton fields. Or consider his reinterpretation of the Ralph Lauren sweater, where he replaced the American flag with the Pan-African flag colors. They were conversations instead of just clothes. The fashion world took notice. The Metropolitan Museum of Arts Costume and Institute acquired three pieces from denim tears for the permanent collection. Think about that. From folding clothes at J. Crew to having your work in one of the world's most prestigious museums. But Emery wasn't done. In February 2022, he was appointed as Supreme's first ever creative director, Supreme. A brand that had operated for nearly 30 years without a creative director was just changing its playbook. And who was he? The kid who started in retail, he had reached the summit of streetwear. Supreme Spring Summer 2023 collection was Emery's first at bat. The pressure was immense. How do you push forward a brand that's already at the top? How do you innovate while respecting a legacy? The collection was his answer. A perfect blend of Supreme's rebellious spirit with new cultural narratives. Though his tenure as Supreme would end in controversy over issues of systemic racism, it didn't diminish what he had built. So how does someone go from working retail to building a multi-million dollar brand? Here's what we can learn from Tremaine's journey. Every job is a learning opportunity. I hate when people make fun of other people's jobs. It's corny. And for all you know, the work you're doing now can be preparing you for something greater in the future. Those years on the shop floor surely helped them pay his bills, but it also gave him something more. The understanding on how the fashion industry itself works from the ground up. Second, as we already saw, relationships matter. From meeting a seed at that Nike party to collaborating with Virgil, Emery's network became his net worth. Third, authenticity always sells. Denim Tears succeeded because it was about telling stories that needed to be told. His story is a reflection of his cultural heritage. With yours, yours can be just as powerful. Take risks. We won't achieve anything if we don't dare to take that leap. Whether it was moving to London or investing his severance pay in his dreams, Tremaine wasn't afraid to bet on himself. Today, Tremaine Emery continues to push boundaries with denim tears, collaborating with major brands like Dior and Ugg. His work is celebrated not just for its style, but its substance. He's proven that with vision, determination, and a willingness to learn, you can build something extraordinary from the most ordinary beginnings. Remember that J. Crew store? Sometimes the distance between folding clothes and founding a fashion empire isn't as far as you might think. Again, it's not about where you start, it's about where you're determined to go. By the way, the platform says if you like this video, you might want to check this one out next. Alright, y'all, this is Leaf North Studios. Next time, I'm out of here.